Uh, my name is Peggy O'Neill Vivanco, Vermont Clean Cities Coordinator. I'm just going to ask everyone who is not presenting, um, like anyone who's not me, uh, put yourself on mute for right now so we don't get any feedback noises. That'd be great. Um, <clears throat> So this is our fourth webinar in a series on medium and heavy duty electric vehicle technologies and equipment. Um, we're calling ourselves the Northern Tier Team. I'm working with um, Sarah Mills Knapp from Maine Clean Communities and Jessica Wilcox from Granite State. Um, our goal is to get some of these technologies on the ground here in the northern tier of New England so we can really see what the cold climate um, impacts are on electric vehicle technologies. As many of you have maybe already heard, we are um, part of the National Clean Cities Network. There are about 100 clean cities coalitions throughout the United States. And um, we are three in the northern tier of New England. We work with um, we work with all sorts of alternative fuels, not just electric. Um, but in this series, we're working just on um, electrification of heavy and medium duty. Um, we work on um, alternative fuels like propane, um, which is another application for buses, um, renewable natural gas, biodiesel, idle reduction and fuel economy improvements, which are really the low hanging fruits um, to get our fleets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and save on fuel and technologies. Uh, and then new mobility um, choices like um, on-demand um, ride shares, um, uh, scooter share, bike share, and so forth. <clears throat> we have a wide range of stakeholders. This is just a snapshot of um, some of our stakeholders um, here in our region. And um, again, we work with each of them on maybe slightly different, um, different pieces of it where each of us has um, key relations with our utilities and our state agencies, as well as um, the vendors who you'll hear from later today. So um, here in Vermont, we, um, our state and our VW fund are um, strong advocates for electrification. And the school bus um, sector is a fantastic um, opportunity to kind of highlight this because they're generally fixed routes. Um, and with our VW fu funding, we have um, a couple of pilots. Um, one's actually going to, I think there's going to be a press release um, next week about it. Um, so we have um, Franklin West, which is um, further no in the northwest um, corner of Vermont. Um, and we have some Bluebird buses um, on the road there. Barry Unified um, School District has um, some Lion buses. Champlain Valley School District will be getting some line buses as well. Um, Barrie is out towards Montpelier. Champlain Valley um, is towards Hinesburg. And then South Burlington, um, we worked on um, a VW grant last year and they'll be getting some Highland Electric um, buses, school buses, I believe four, um, hopefully later this year. Certainly we're dealing, we're all dealing with um, supply chain issues um, that uh, our vendors will um, hopefully address later today. Um, and then Sarah, do you wanna talk a little bit about your um, school? Yeah, in Maine we have um, one uh, electric bus that is was just delivered for this school year, which we're really excited about, Mount Desert Island High School, which is in um, the Bar Harbor area, so kind of uh, down east, um, was also used, uh, was also purchased with VW funds. Um, and has been working out really great so far, I, I've heard. And they do have a, um, a supplemental heating um, device on the bus for the cold winters. Um, but, you know, happy to answer questions there, but we're really excited. We don't have any that I know of coming after um, this one in MDI, but we're really hoping, you know, to push, push further on this. So, I think that's it for Maine. Um, we, Peggy, do you want to talk a little bit about the transit buses in Vermont? Yep, we have electric transit bus projects going on. Green Mountain Transit launched two electric Proterra buses 
um, in January 2020, uh, right before the pandemic um, really hit, um, but they are on the road and rolling around um, Burlington. And they've also made um, some of the commuter runs um, out to Montpelier. Uh, then Marble Valley Regional Transit, um, again, this was VW money. Um, they, I think they're getting a Gillig. I don't know if they have it yet, um, but someone from the state might be able to better clarify that for me. And then our partner in the Upper Valley, um, the area along the Connecticut River between um, Vermont and New Hampshire is where Jessica Wilcox and I work a lot. Um, Advanced Transit um, has um, two 35 foot battery electric Gillig's on order. Um, and they had funding from um, an FTA um, NOLO along with um, some state funding. So those will be, um, um, I think we're, they're expecting delivery in about um, next year. So we have, the, we have the technology, we have these buses either on the road or coming um, in Vermont. So we're looking to really see how these, um, how these roll out and to get more opportunities to test electric um, buses. Sarah, you want to talk about your projects? Yeah, unfortunately, I was I was waiting to hear an update from our transit agencies and, and haven't heard um, from them in terms of timing on when the, the electric buses or what what um, type of electric buses. I know they were in the procurement process last time I checked. So the Greater Portland Metro um, is getting two electric buses and Biddeford Saco Old Orchard Beach Transit will be getting two buses as well. And they, they actually both transit agencies have, have different types of charging needs based on their routes. Um, so it's going to the the kind of charging infrastructure is going to be different based on the the transit agency that's getting them but they were also i believe supported by the bw settlement funds as well as some um you know transit uh, money from the federal government so uh, we're excited i think they should be here hopefully later this year if not early next year and um, we'll send out some some information and an update for those Okay, before before we move on, I did want to uh, make a clarification. Um, Advanced Transit is also getting um, three smaller paratransit buses to use for their on-demand service, um, which I think is another interesting twist on how we move people around in our rural states. Um, so thank you. Jessica Wilcox, you wanna take over? Great, thank you, Peggy and Sarah. Yes, we have a fabulous lineup of presenters for you this morning. We've got presenters from Bluebird, Lion Electric, and Highland Electric Fleet on the uh, the school bus side, and then on the transit bus side, Proterra, BYD, and BAE Systems. And we'll introduce those presenters a little bit more going forward. Next slide, please. Jessica, you should be able to take control of the slide deck if you're not okay. able to look. And so up next, we have Jim Anderson uh, from Anderson Bluebird to open us uh, up to what Bluebird has to offer on the school bus side. Jim Anderson's a second generation owner and vice president of sales for this family owned uh, Anderson Bluebird Bus Sales of New England, which is based in Rhode Island, but also serves uh, the Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts area with Bluebird and Microbird uh, buses. And uh, co-assisting him this morning is Jason Raposa, who is the business development man manager with, uh, with Anderson. So go ahead and uh, take control there, Jim. And don't forget to unmute, Jim. There I go. I'm getting myself organized here technically. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm on now, Jessica. Thank you. Okay. And I've got myself unmuted. I appreciate it. And I'm just, if you could just direct me into that take control button uh, where I can find that. It should be uh, at the top of your browser there, just to there the it is. left. You got I it? I just hit it right now. Okay. Um, I hit it and I don't see the slide deck. So maybe then, uh, Je uh, Jessica, do you want to just uh, manually take control of that? If you could get that slide deck up for me, please. Yep, I've got yep. that for you. If you could, we could just start here. Bingo. 
I can't thank you enough, okay, for representation. Uh, Jessica, I appreciate the uh, the introduction and uh, my compliments are out to the Clean Cities uh, Northern Tier team uh, with Peggy and Sarah joining us and uh, your guys' coalition and your initiative out there to, uh, to assist us and promote electric bus uh, throughout our communities. Uh, we can't thank you enough for the opportunity. Um, Again, I'm, I've been introduced already as second generation owner of Anderson uh, and Jason Repose is on page. Jason, if you would just want to just say hello. Yep. Uh, great to see everybody this morning. Uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity. Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to get some some very much needed and, and important information out there uh, regarding electric buses. Beautiful. Next slide, please. Okay, here, we're gonna represent our Bluebird product line today here. Um, and this just gives you a quick snapshot of, uh, uh, of our type C and our type D. And uh, before I turn it over to Jason, I just wanna just make one comment that this is a complete partnership on the electric side of our business with Bluebird, with Cummins Powertrain, uh, which is our battery powertrain and Cummins being a worldwide uh, national player. Uh, we're proud to have them on board with us. And uh, further in the uh, in the discussion, you'll hear a little bit more about Nuvi Corporation. Uh, there are V to G uh, uh, charging infrastructure uh, partner with Bluebird from a corporate side of it. So we feel strongly out in the marketplace that we have three strong national players uh, to be able to facilitate a turnkey operation. Jason, you want to add a few things to the product line, please? Um, so so sure. So you see there the type. C vision up top. That is the uh, the, the bus that we have currently have deployed in uh, Franklin West Supervisory Union. Um, so we have manufacturing capabilities for the Type C, the Type D transit bus, and uh, on the next slide you'll see uh, the Type A uh, Microbird bus. If you could uh, just go to the next slide, there you go. Um, so we have manufacturing and deliverability for all three uh, bus types and also in uh, commercial bus as well. So, so those three product design lines do come in um, commercial white uh, bus product. All of our school buses are designed to meet federal and state safety and construction requirements and designs. We're very proud of that. Um, the same steel bus that you see rolling down the road with an internal combustion engine is the same steel constructed bus with all the safety rollover crash protection that you see, uh, you know, in your diesel or gasoline powered buses. So uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, and Bluebird is 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 uh, continuing to lead in that regard with respect to their uh, safety and design uh, of their school buses. And if I could just add on this slide here with the type A, just for the consumers that are there, the school districts that it's becoming more and more popular uh, with the MFSAB, the multifunctional student activity bus. We call that the white iron uh, for school districts for their after school activities to be able to transport children uh, for under 14 passengers, for example, with non CDL licensing uh, that we offer that product also in the uh, microbird type A product for the MFSAB. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a quick slide. We don't want to get too, too, too in depth with this, but we just want to just let the audience know that we do have deployments and growth throughout the United States and Canada. Uh, Bluebird is in 24 states throughout the United States today and four Canadian provinces uh, in, uh, in growing strong with a, with a large back order of, uh, of, of buses. Jason, would you like to add a couple comments on the deployments? Yeah, I, I think it's just worthy to note there, you know, that uh, that by the end of this year, Bluebird will have over 800 electric school buses deployed, as Jim said, in 24 states around the United States and, and four Canadian provinces operating in all types of environments, uh, whether they're hilly, mountainous terrains, cold weather, warm weather, um, you, you know, they've really uh, made their footprint and their presence known. Um, for being an industry leader in alternative fuels. And uh, it just makes perfect sense that, that uh, they're, they're leading the charge here with their electric bus initiative, something we're very proud of, very proud to be, uh, you know, involved in that, that effort. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're out of the theory stage, uh, you know, full production capabilities. We'll learn more a little bit about that uh, in our deliverabilities, uh, you know, on time for our districts that, that desperately need the equipment. 
and, and I do want to add and just throw a kudos out to the state of Vermont, okay, and the uh, VEIC group, uh, Kate Kellane. Uh, we were proud to be able to deploy, which you'll hear a little bit more of this, uh, this in later in the, uh, in, the, in the presentation, but we did deploy the first two Bluebird buses into the, the New England region um, and uh, uh, operating up in the hills of uh, Fairfax. So we're, we're proud of that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a quick overview of our major component systems. Again, we're not going to get too in depth with this, okay, due to the time frame, but we, we do want to just show this snapshot that uh, that uh, these are the uh, the major components that go along with our battery packs and our thermal management systems yeah. and our motors uh, and our drive motors. Um, and uh, again, I uh, just want to just leave you with the fact that this is all safety orientated. Uh, built into the bus, uh, roll caged under between the frames with the proper safety steel and everything needed required to meet all the federal motor vehicle safety standards. And uh, Jason mentioned earlier that our bus design has not changed. We've just incorporated the EV into our product line. Um, next slide, please. Uh, as we move into um, uh, electric EV, there are major, major benefits that you're going to hear about throughout today. But the biggest benefit is, is that we are reducing maintenance components and we are eliminating these components that have driven our industry over the last decade into higher cost, more maintenance upgrades, uh, more downtime um, that the uh, transportation departments throughout the school districts have experienced. So we're grateful to be able to be able to sit here today and say that we have completely eliminated these components and driving down a, uh, a cost neutral. Jason, would you like to just add a couple quick comments to uh, cost neutral? No, I, I think, Jim, you covered uh, all the key benefits there. You know, if there are additional questions or concerns after the uh, program, we'll, we'll be happy to take those questions. But the, the key takeaway here is uptime, improved uptime. Uh, no more engines derating, no more check engine lights that come on. Um, and, and all of these all of these features here that you see on the screen are all eliminated. So you don't have any of those maintenance costs or repair costs associated. Thank you, Jason. Uh, next slide, please. Just FYI, uh, one more minute, John. Yep. I'm so sorry, we're gonna Jim, we're gonna have to finish up here shortly, okay? But as we want to just present to everybody that as we move into the charging and the infrastructure, okay, um, we are capable and our buses come standard to be able to accept all levels of charge, okay, on the buses. So if we can move into the next slide. OK, please. Uh, we just want to highlight quickly here that we are capable and standard to be able to handle the V to G, which is a revenue right. source for the school departments. OK, and uh, this can we could talk about this for an hour, but right. uh, we'll we'll move on to the next slide, please. Um, Jason, you want to just tap real quickly yep. on the uh, our EV ecosystem? Yep. Just just real quick here, folks. So so th this is an eight section grid here but there are four major components that we need to focus on as you move through your ev deployments one you have to have your manufacturer dealer distributor with all of the things that that involves service and support you have to have your community involvement your school districts your town councils your city councils mayor's office your sustainability committees they have to be on board everybody on the same page you have to have your financing in place. How are you gonna pay for these buses, whether it's grants, bond funding, we'll learn all about that stuff in the next couple uh, presenters. You also need to have a great infrastructure partner, which is going to include your local utilities and your uh, EVSC, your equipment, charging equipment suppliers. So those four little silos are very key there. Uh, you know, that everybody's gotta consider, get everybody on the same page, everybody talking the same language. Yeah. Um, and, and that's key to success for your project. And then you. the next, yeah, the next slide will go into uh, yep, just, just a real, real world quickly, application. Just, I just want to just tap this real quickly here, and then we'll finish up. Uh, 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 um, Peggy mentioned that there will be a press release. Okay, it is actually on October 28th. It's open to the general public. It's open to anybody that wants to be able to come. It'll be between 11 and 12 on the 28th of October at Fairfax uh, West Supervisory Union's um, uh, facility. Bus, yeah, bus garage, it's it's uh, on Hunt Street, 171 Hunt Street in Fairfax, Vermont. So we welcome everybody to come out. The governor's gonna be there and other political uh, 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 colleagues and clean cities 
uh, uh, representation. So we can't thank you enough. And I think if we move into the next slide, I think we should be closing out here. Yeah. Um, this here is just, you're gonna hear a little bit more about this. This is just some grant initiatives um, and funding sources. And also uh, you'll hear from Highland earlier, uh, later in the presentation. Uh, they're a, a, a vendor and a component and a, and a partner of ours. Uh, you'll hear their their uh, their appetite that's that's uh, investing into this space, and then uh, I think we'll just move to a thank you. Uh, if you move to the yeah. next slide, uh, yeah. my self representation. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the Clean Cities Correlation, and I just want to leave you as as ownership that we are involved and uh, committed to be able to support uh, the product from the initiation of your insight of wanting to go electric to the complete delivery, and uh, I'll leave you with that. And Jason, you. if you want to just thank you and yep. Yep. Jessica, Thanks. appreciate the opportunity. Great. Thank, thank you, you Jim and Jason. Great presentation. Actually, there are a couple of questions that came in in the chat if you want to maybe just respond to those via the chat. Um, but for the sake of the timeline, I think we'll move on to our next presenter. Um, so I'll let Sarah take it from here. Thank you. Thank you. So we next up, we have Maria Brown with Lion Electric. Uh, she's a sales manager and she'll be talking to us about uh, Lion's offerings. Go ahead, Maria, take it away. All right, thank you. And thank you for having me here today. Can you guys see? Everyone can see this, okay? I took control, so, okay, awesome. Um, so I'm gonna start you guys off with just a short video um, about Lion Electric, if you're not too familiar um, with who we are. So let's get this going. All right, um, so at where we are today, that, that video quickly becomes uh, old with the amount of deployments that we're, we've been doing. So we do have over 400 vehicles on the road now with over 8 million miles driven. Um, our company continues to grow. So we are putting in a, we're gonna be building our own um, battery factory in Canada. So all of the batteries that we'll be making will be going into all of our um, electric vehicles. We are also putting in a, it's going to be the largest um, medium and heavy duty vehicle manufacturing plant in the US. 
Um, this is going to be in Joliet, Illinois. It's currently under construction, um, and we expect vehicles to be coming off of that floor um, in 2022. So the capacity there is going to go up to 20,000. So it's very exciting. Um, when I started with Lion about a year ago, we had 450 employees. Now we have double that. So um, our growth has been has been great. Um, and this is our um, kind of our history. I'm going to go through this real quick. So we were found in 2008. We started with a diesel school bus product. Quickly learned that the next phase of school buses is going to be electric. So we deployed our first um, all electric school bus in Minnesota in 2016. And from there, our product line just continues to grow. So we have class X, class six, class eight trucks. Uh, we have the Lion C and Lion D. We currently are um, have orders for Lion D, which will be um, um, delivered in 2022. Um, we did just announce to the um, our all electric ambulance product. So we just announced that this week. Kind of go into the details of our um, school buses. So we do offer different range options on our school buses. And on the A, we have a 75 mile or 150. And on the C and D, we have a 100, a 125, or a 155. We just do this so that if you're running 60 miles a day, you don't need to be paying for the extra battery capacity of 155 miles. So we give you the option to kind of customize your bus for uh, your applications. All of our buses are um, has a steel construction, but the outside of the bus, the skin of it, is a um, composite material. This is a lighter weight material, meaning you're going to get more miles per kilowatt. Um, it's also going to help with preventing rust and corrosion that you'll see from the salt on your roads. Um, some of the other features, we do have a one piece roof um, like you saw in that video. So this is it's not riveted. Um, it's really going to help with preventing those leaking points. Um, on the C and D, we offer two different widths. So your standard width is a 96 inch. Um, we also offer a 102. The 102 is going to give you an additional six inches of aisle space on the inside of the bus. Um, drivers, students love this. Um, it's great for, you know, backpacks, you have instruments, you have uh, sporting equipment, just makes it a lot easier um, for the students to get in and out of the bus. Uh, all of our buses are equipped with regenerative braking. So when you take your foot off the accelerator, um, you are going to be putting power back into your battery, giving you um, more range. Uh, let's see if I can go to the next one. So when we talk about charging, we do offer level two, your standard J1772 charging, or you can do the dual CCS combo, um, depending on what you want. We can have it on the front of the bus, like it's showing here if you pull in straight, or we can put them on the rear of the bus if you um, happen to back in. All of our buses are equipped um, with B to G ready, so um, that's not an issue. When we talk about cold weather, um, so all of our batteries are equipped with a thermal management system. So batteries like to be at that 70 degree um, temperature. So our thermal management system is going to cool or heat the batteries to maintain the most efficient temperature for those batteries to run at. Um, so we have um, we've proven this throughout a number of different states. I mean, we have 100 plus units running in Canada as well. And I'm going to go through kind of this. This is a um, one of our customers in Missouri. So he keeps a journal of his experience with his Lion C bus. Um, he received this bus last February and it was flatbedded from our factory in St. Jerome over to his facility in Missouri. So sub zero temperatures um, that bus was taken off the flatbed and it started right up. Um, I have the website listed on here of of um, his experience with his electric bus. Um, just if you guys want to take a look and check it out, he does keep record to of um, his miles, his cost per mile that he's getting for electric versus diesel. So when I just checked it yesterday, his electric bus, he's getting about 12 cents per mile, whereas diesel, he's getting about 32 cents per mile. So with every route that he's running his bus on, he's saving 20 cents per mile. I think we have about one, 
one minute if you want to wrap up because I know there's a few questions that might be good to yep, take. Yep, uh, the, my last slide. So um, just Alliant Experience, just to give you a quick rundown of, of how we support you. We have a grant team that can help with finding funding in your area or helping with um, writing your applications. We have Lion Energy Team, which is our infrastructure company. They're going to come in. They're going to help you figure out what infrastructure you need to support your um, your um, electric buses. We partner with a bunch of different charging um, companies, Nuvi, Blink, ABB, uh, ChargePoint, you name it. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of different offerings there. Lion Academy is the training group, so they'll come in, do driver training, mechanic training, first responder training. Um, Lion Assistance is our 24-7 um, technical support. Bright Squad is a local service team. If there's an issue, they'll come out to your facility, help troubleshoot any issues. And Lion Beat is our telematics. Um, that's going to give you all sorts of good information about how you're using regenerative braking, how you're, how many kilowatts per mile you're getting, a lot of information. So, whew, all right. <laughs> Here's thank my contact you. information if um, if you have any more additional questions. So thank you. Uh, one question um, in the chat. Do line vehicles meet by America? I, I don't so know. when we, we will have all of our products coming out of the U.S. facility at the end of 2022 and they will meet by America at that point. OK, perfect. Thank you. And that was a great um, for you. Thank you for highlighting the um, the cost. Uh, differential. I think we had a question about that. Um, oh, and what's the the total? What's the cost on the Lion M? Um, it, it's going to vary. I mean, based on um, your option content, so you're going to be around that that 350, 300, 350 range, just depending on option content. Great. Thanks. Okay, great. Well, I think we can um, move on next to. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much, Maria. And um, yeah, please, I, there may be more questions in the chat I didn't get to. Right, so we have Highland Electric Fleet and Matt Stanbury coming up next. Um, Matt, would you like to take over? Sure. Thank you so much. Um, big thanks uh, first to uh, Peggy and the whole uh, Clean Cities Northern Tier team. Um, you guys are amazing partners and uh, we appreciate it every day. Um, so um, I will see if I can get control of these slides and move us forward. Okay, can you see that? Yep, looks great. Perfect, awesome. Okay, so um, Highland uh, Electric Fleets is a three-year-old company um, that's uh, based uh, just on North Shore of Boston um, in uh, Beverly, Massachusetts, actually across the street from our original project with the Beverly Middle School. Uh, we uh, were formed with the observation that there was really good uh, commercial product um, that was uh, being provided by the major manufacturers thanks to the good work of Bluebird, Lion, um, and, uh, and the other manufacturers. Um, and there was a lot of demand for um, better alternatives to, uh, to diesels, but there were two basic challenges that were preventing people at that point in time thinking about true electrification at scale. Uh, and those challenges were one sort of obvious that there was a, uh, an upfront cost differential that was substantial uh, relative to a diesel. And the second uh, was uh, a little less obvious, but just as important, that was uh, complexity. Um, so when transportation directors were hearing about um, the option to move to electric and they thought about their their core role and how they're judged, which is just moving kids back and forth, of course, which is uh, one of the most critical jobs in a school, um, it, when you started talking to them about the need to change over depots, dig up depots, put in charging infrastructure, manage charging infrastructure, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was quite a, quite a task to, to think about undertaking while performing the core job function. So uh, a company was formed to uh, really try and tackle those, uh, those two core challenges. Um, so what we are is a turnkey electrification, fleet electrification service provider that focuses on municipal fleets and is 100% uh, laser focused on school buses uh, today. 
Uh, we do everything in, in short, we do everything that uh, you need in order to, to electrify uh, your fleet. And I'll go through uh, those steps uh, a little bit in just a, just a second. Um, company uh, is now active, uh, has projects uh, underway uh, in Vermont, in Massachusetts, uh, down in Montgomery, Maryland, where we've got the largest school bus electrification project uh, in the country. Um, we're also now active in uh, the Canadian provinces. Um, we are uh, vendor agnostic, so we work with all the major manufacturers, have uh, great partnerships uh, with uh, the teams at uh, Bluebird, Lion, Thomas, um, and uh, IC, um, and as well as some of the um, uh, the, the manufacturers, the other manufacturers in the type A space, and then work with all the major charging providers uh, as well. Companies uh, been capitalized to a quarter of a billion dollars um, to uh, to support these uh, these projects, and we're now the largest buyer uh, of uh, electric school buses uh, in the country. So a little bit more about how how we do this. So. Um, our, our, we have four basic goals um, when we're entering into a partnership with the school district, and we really do mean a partnership. We enter into long-term partnerships with school districts, you know, upwards of 10 years. Um, and uh, our goals are to, to provide affordability. Uh, and so what we work towards is getting uh, all of our school districts um, to budget neutrality uh, with what it costs to own and operate a diesel school bus. And what we do um, in order to, to make that happen is take advantage of a bunch of the uh, economic advantages that electric school buses do provide, um, despite the fact that they have an up, a higher upfront cost, um, and uh, really leverage those advantages, many of which are hard for school districts to, to capture on their own, um, to uh, create a subscription um, that uh, school districts uh, can get access to uh, electric school buses uh, without the upfront cost. Um, and uh, our goal, again, is to make it so that subscription price, which is just an annual payment um, per bus, uh, makes it so that the school district um, is budget neutral uh, relative to their traditional diesel uh, approach. So one goal, affordability. Uh, the second goal is simplicity. So I mentioned we take on all the aspects of the project. So what does that look like? So we finance the project. We, we, bought, we procure and buy all of the buses, the equipment. Um, we oversee the charging infrastructure installation. So all the construction and engineering on depots. I work with the school district on their plan for a transition over time. Uh, of their fleet. Uh, and then we manage that charging infrastructure, do all the interface with the uh, utilities um, and pay for all the, uh, the electricity that fuels the buses. Um, we pay for um, the maintenance of the vehicles as well. We train the maintenance staff so we don't change any labor. Uh, we train the maintenance staff um, that the school district traditionally works with and we train the drivers um, on, on how to operate. We do both of those training sessions in conjunction uh, with uh, great dealers like Jim's shop. Um, so uh, that those are collaborative efforts. Um, again, the goal here is that uh, the school district, uh, from the school district point of view, the operation is as normal uh, as possible um, to their traditional operations. In the process, we take all the technology risk um, and financial risk associated with the technology and put it on our side uh, of the ledger. So uh, moving on, I'll give you a sense of a project. It looks like it uh, the, might be a little small to see uh, on the uh, conversion here, but this is our, our Beverly project. You see a couple of buses here. This one happens to be a Thomas installation. This is C2 Julie. Um, they get their first um, last year. They've got another one coming uh, by the end of this year. We've got two Rhombus uh, DC fast chargers in place here, and we've upsized the infrastructure uh, to two and a half megawatts um, so that we can limit the number of times that we're 
uh, cutting the ground up. This is a, an installation where the district has um, so enjoyed their experience with electric that they are now looking at a potential full fleet electrification uh, over time. So just to give you a sense of what a project timeline uh, looks like, so again, sorry for the conversion here of, uh, of the fonts um, in the slideshow, uh, but uh, we started this project back in uh, 2019. This was a VW grant uh, program uh, supported project uh, originally uh, and uh, did our charger installations you know, end of uh, you know, uh, third quarter last year. Um, and then um, are now on to the, uh, the second uh, bus uh, deployment, um, which is coming up kind of any day now. Okay. And then for- uh, yeah, Just about a little more than one minute if you wanna wrap up and then there's a few questions, I think. Great, I'm at the end. So just, uh, it's already mentioned, so I don't even need to cover it too much, but uh, the local project in Vermont, um, so, uh, four buses coming in um, along with the associated charging infrastructure. Um, we are uh, actively working on uh, implementation uh, up in Vermont. This is with uh, South Burlington. Uh, we're super excited uh, to commission that project. And I'll just flag for folks, if you want to see what this uh, electrification really means to a school district, I encourage you to uh, click on this, uh, this link. These slides are available for everybody. Um, to see the Beverly uh, bus in action um, and how the school district interacts with it. Okay. And thanks so much. That's the end. Great. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, we did have a question about the cold weather packages. It looks like Jim's chiming in, but have, what have you seen with the cold weather packages? Are they still doing heating based on propane or are there heat pump options? We have not uh, done any projects that use uh, propane heaters uh, to date. Um, so right now we're modeling, of course, when we're doing route analysis for, for schools, um, we're modeling to the coldest day. Um, and um, often what we're looking at is, uh, you know, up to a 50% range reduction um, mm -hmm. and we're planning around that. Um, so that's, uh, that's the way that, uh, we, you know, start out the, the addressing the, the, the cold weather effects, and then we plan our charging infrastructure around that. So if we need, need midday charging, um, we can, we can plan that into a project to date. Um, our installations haven't required it, but it's always an option. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Good to know. Great. Well, I think I'm handing it over to Peggy. Oh, we've got a poll. That's right. Uh, just a quick poll that will pop up. Um, so we are developing multi-day demonstrations for um, later this fall. If you could just chime in on a little bit about what types of um, transit or school buses or, or particular electric vehicles you'd like to see um, based on your fleets or, or your interest, um, that would be helpful for us. Great seeing the answers pour in now. Um, great interest in the transit shuttle and route analysis. Excellent. I think that can be really helpful. And the passenger van. Excellent. Okay. I think we will move on. Now we've got Proterra coming up next. Great. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, so as you're, as you're seeing, this is a bit like speed dating. Um, thank you to our vendors uh, for, uh -oh. for giving, giving this information. Please quickly grab my power control thing. It's in Can, my bag or upstairs. Can you go? So I think we're getting some tech issues there. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Lisa Lila Lund, who's a director of channel sales for Proterra Powered, which brings Proterra electric vehicle technologies to medium and heavy duty vehicle manufacturers, such as Thomas Bluebird and Van Hole Coaches. Lisa's been working for over a decade in the fields of clean energy and electric vehicles. So we're gonna hear from Lisa on her Proterra bus products. Thanks, Lisa. 
Good morning, everyone. I think I'm in presenter mode now. So here we go. Yeah, good morning and thank you to Vermont Clean Cities for putting this together. Proterra loves working with the Clean Cities groups and we are very happy to be here this morning. I'm uh, actually, uh, uh, let's see here, hold on one sec. Um, hopefully I'm in presenter mode now. I'm not quite sure I am. I might, Jessica, I might have you go ahead and uh, do the slides, please. Okay, we'll have Jessica take care of that for you. Okay, great. Thank you. And oh. she's just scrolling ahead to your slide deck just a second. Okay, awesome. Love it. Okay, great. I'm actually today presenting on behalf of Thomas Built Buses and the Proterra Transit Group and the Proterra Battery Group, and also W.C. Cressy, who is the Thomas Built dealer in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Next slide, please. A little background on Proterra. We have been in business uh, with selling transit buses. The first one was on the road in 2010. We have over 1,000 buses and 20 million service miles. We have a factory in California and a factory in Greenville, South Carolina, and our research and development is in the San Francisco area. We uh, That says 500 employees. We now have over um, 800 employees and uh, growing every day. Next slide, please. The, uh, we launched a new uh, Proterra Transit bus the ZX45E, and I'm happy to say that we, we do have the bus in Vermont, which is great with Green Mountain Transit. And Proterra specializes in batteries, chargers, drivetrains, and connected vehicle platforms. I am part of the Proterra Powered Group that takes our technology and partners with other OEMs like Thomas Built Buses, Von Hohl Coaches, um, FCCC and optimal on the shuttle bus. Next slide, please. As you'll see here, these are some of the recent partners and original equipment manufacturers around the world that have chosen the Proterra battery to be their battery of choice to electrify their fleets. Next slide, please. The Proterra Transit bus uh, there are over a thousand sold and they're in 43 states to 130 different customers. Next slide, please. This gives you a little background on our partner Daimler and they are also electrifying many trucks and we're working very closely with them on the Thomas built Julie school bus. Julie is her is her nickname. Uh, and we're going to talk about that some more today. Next slide, please. This gives you a little background of how the partnership works. The batteries are designed and engineered at Proterra. We work very closely with Freightliner on the chassis and the two engineering teams. The Julie bus is really built from the ground up. It's not a retrofit. It's designed and built from the ground up to be an electric bus. The uh, batteries are between the frame rails and in safe in some of the safest locations. Uh, it's then the chassis then goes to Thomas Bill buses in High Point. And WC Cressy is the Thomas Bill dealer. Uh, they have headquarters in Maine, but they also have service locations in um, in New Hampshire and Vermont. So there is good local support right near near the schools and transit agencies. Next slide, please. The um, as as some of the previous speakers have talked about, the great thing about uh, electric buses is that there is a reduced uh, maintenance cost, so it makes your operating expenses less. Next slide, please. The uh, Proterra battery 
uh, is a has a rugged enclosed ballistics grade uh, material for protection. And we have 70 sensors inside and liquid cool batteries. Uh, you'll see here, uh, you can get a glimpse of the battery inside and you'll see the green bars there where the liquid cooling is. Next slide, please. I think this is one of the most important things for um, transit agencies and school districts out there to think about is the number one is the safety uh, of their battery. And Perterra batteries are designed with po passive propagation resistance. And that simply means that if there were to be a thermal event in a cell, it would not cascade to the neighboring cells. We've had buses out there since 2010, and we have never had an incident um, inside with the batteries um, that was anything um, of, of danger to people. Next slide, please. This gives you a look at our R&D facility in, uh, in Burlingame in the San Francisco area and the battery thermal management system that does keep the batteries at around 70 degrees while they're operating and charging. And uh, in our warranty, we have a very robust one for cold weather. Uh, the batteries from minus 22 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm happy to say that the buses in um, Toke, Alaska, the school bus, uh, was running really well at minus 22 degrees several times uh, last winter. So they're very happy with the performance. And many times when their diesel bus gave them problems, their electric bus was was uh, cruising along uh, transporting students. Next slide, please. The um, so there are a lot of factors that affect range and one of um, and the uh, in colder climates, uh, the range is reduced. Uh, this is an, an average of vehicle efficiency, which is expressed in kilowatt hours per mile. And it can also be driver behavior, um, weather. Uh, one thing, another great benefit of electric buses is that you do get energy put back in with the regenerative braking. So we've noticed a difference in up to 15% between drivers of those that learn how to drive and maximize uh, the ability to put energy back into the battery. Next slide, please. The Perterra uh, battery inside the Thomas Built Julie bus is 226 kilowatt hours. And that's the nameplate energy. And something that I'd like to share with people today is it's a very important when you're considering which vehicles, which buses to choose from, it's very important to study the warranty very carefully. The Proterra has a very robust warranty. The initial usable energy, um, one limits the energy in the beginning so that it'll last well over the period, is 201 kilowatt hours. Over eight years, we uh, warranty that it should be, depending on your duty cycle, but it should be around 161 kilowatt hours. That's more than most uh, other school buses are on day one. And people often ask me if, uh, if you, what happens after eight years. Well, the battery is still, it, it'll have a little bit less energy than it did on day one, but the battery is still great. We, we have buses, as I mentioned, since 2010 on the road for the transit market, and we have yet to get those um, batteries back. So um, they're, they're still going strong, they just don't have as much energy. Next slide, please. Lisa, you have one minute left. Great, perfect. So I don't wanna go into the details of this slide, but I just wanna mention that there's a new parameter for you to consider when you're looking at warranty. Uh, you have years, so it's eight years, 175,000 miles, but there's an important thing called gross discharge throughput. And that's the amount of, of different discharge and cycling that your battery can handle. Ours is 400,000 kilowatt hours per vehicle. People often ask, can your battery handle fast charging and can it handle vehicle to grid? And the answer is yes, our batteries are made for fast charging. Uh, no problem there. 
uh, they're medium heavy duty uh, market focused. Um, the, the transit buses charge up to 500 kilowatts and it's the same battery, so yes. And then also this is just an example of doing vehicle to grid similar to the great project that was done uh, in Beverly, Massachusetts this summer that there's plenty of, of room left. So depending on your duty cycle. Uh, next slide, please. This just gives you uh, a small picture of the Patera chargers. Um, we do offer DC chargers that are 60 kilowatts, 90, 120, up to 1 1.5 megawatt, megawatt stations. And uh, the way they work is you can put up to four dispensers to a 60 kilowatt charger, and you will always get the fast charge. Uh, next slide, please. I just wanted to point out that the um, Julie buses can also charge on a 25 kilowatt DC charger as well. Uh, it would take longer around eight hours. Our, the 60 kilowatt is in around 3.5, but that is available. Next slide, please. This just shows a little background of some of the vehicle to grid projects we're doing. We're very proud of the project together with Highland and with Thomas Built Buses in Beverly. Next slide, please. This shows a picture of some of the different installations of plugging the electric school bus into the Proterra charger. Next slide. So I'd like to thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak today. I wanted to point out that uh, Brian Cressy uh, is on today and we he is the um, W.C. Cressy president, and he's on the call today too, listening in and, uh, and to help me answer questions. And Doug Miller from Thomas Built Buses as well. If you have transit questions, Steve Kofta is the uh, regional sales director. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lisa. Really appreciate it. Um, again, speed dating here on uh, electric bus technology. Um, there was a question in the chat um, about um, maintenance and training. So if you could answer that in the chat, that would be great. And we will move on to Randy Primo from BYD. He's the regional sales manager for the Northeast. Um, and he was in public transit in New York State for almost 26 years. Um, in maintenance and operations, so certainly is no ways around a bus. He supports um, nine states um, in the Northeast with their electrification and clean energy needs. Um, BYD offers transit buses, coaches, trucks, solar, zero emission ecosystems, um, and um, the uh, supporting technology for clean energy needs. Randy, take it over. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Peggy and Clean Cities. Uh, very, very happy to be part of this webinar. And I uh, would love to uh, give kudos to the previous presenters, and I'm sure John will do a great job as well. Great job to all the previous presenters. All right. So just a quick overview of BYD's business divisions. As you can see, we have a, a lot of legs to our business. Uh, what you may not know is that BYD is a global, global leader in clean energy and transportation, and we have the technology, the experience, and the expertise, and the business uh, bandwidth to make your clean energy and transportation needs a reality, and I'm looking forward to hopefully making some penetration in the state of Vermont. Uh, some quick BYD facts, 220,000 employees globally, 30 industrial campuses on five continents, uh, global leader in electric buses, over 60,000 buses delivered worldwide. Uh, we have a very proud of our Lancaster facility, uh, 550,000 square feet. We can put out uh, roughly 1,500 vehicles a year. That number can go up if we need to, uh, depending on our uh, crew and our shifts. Uh, top electrical vehicle producer, we've produced over 170,000 electric passenger vehicles. And uh, as many know, Warren Buffett has invested in uh, BYD. Uh, largest selection of uh, buses and coaches from 23 foot to 60 foot. Some of the electric bus applications, airports, transit agencies, universities, corporate and tourism. 
BYD has a 12-year warranty on its batteries for its buses and coaches. And on our school bus, we actually offer a 15-year warranty. And just a couple quick comments, and there'll be some more slides as well on our batteries. Uh, BYD is a battery manufacturer, and we chose iron phosphate batteries for their safety and their lifelong. Uh, we expect our batteries to last at least 20 years and to be repurposed in energy storage systems. Uh, just a little bit about uh, BYD. Very proud of our ISO 9001 certification in our facility. Uh, we've created hundreds of manufacturing jobs and our Lancaster Phil's facility workforce is comprised of 85% minority. Uh, we've got a great YouTube video speaking to one of our employees at BYD and, and the Transit Career Ladder Partnership we've provided him and many, many others. Uh, just uh, some numbers, and these numbers are a little conservative, but some maintenance and fuel savings with going electric, as we all know, you're going to have lower maintenance costs uh, simply because of the less moving parts. Uh, and you're going to have lower fuel costs, and particularly the Northeast is a great region for saving money with electric use, just by the way we produce electricity. Uh, core technology, again, BYD and batteries, that's our one of our uh, foundations and core technologies. We were founded as a battery company in 1995, and we are one of the largest producers of batteries. Uh, BYD's iron phosphate batteries are ideal for bus applications simply because they're the safest in the industry. They're non-toxic. They have high energy density. We have a wide range of operating temperatures, and we also use battery thermal management and advanced water cooling technology to maintain high efficiencies. Uh, some of the core technology, safety guaranteed, impact, puncture. We've got some good videos on this as well with our battery technology and the safety. External fire test, crushing, the vib vibration, and the drop test. Uh, BYD batteries are rigorously tested and remain stable in even the most extreme conditions, guaranteeing the safety of passengers and drivers. And that's one of our paramount concerns. Again, that's why we chose iron phosphate technology. BYD's core technology uh, propulsion, propulsion system, uh, vehicle to grid, charging interface. We do AC, DC. We've moved towards the DC uh, for interoperability, but we still offer AC currently. Uh, our battery packs and our motors are hub drive uh, motors. Uh, very excited. Uh, BYD is now getting into the school bus arena. Um, we've got a lot of R&D going on in production, and we have one of our Type D school buses out on the West Coast. Uh, I am certainly hoping to get that bus out here on the Northeast and the East Coast uh, next year. Uh, certainly hoping that it'd be great to do some demos and tours around uh, the Northeast and the East Coast. So we have a retrofit Type A, we have a Type D, and our Type D is, can also serve as a Type C. Highest electric school bus battery capacity, electronic stability control, proprietary drivetrain technology, anti-collision technology, which isn't an option, UV dis disinfection sanitation options, anti-bullying safeguard children's seats, easy access lift gate for both type A and D, and a vehicle to grid technology. Uh, this is our retrofit type A electric school bus. Uh, we're, we're proud of this. We're starting to move towards our own retro, our, our own built type A battery uh, electric school bus. This is just a quick snapshot of the retrofit type A electric school bus, powertrain, chassis. Um, one key note, and you'll see them in the other slides as well, as was brought up in an earlier presentation. We are very flexible with battery capacity. Uh, we want to make sure we meet the needs of the individual user and property. Some may want a smaller battery pack. Some may want a larger battery pack. We, we, we can offer any solution. Uh, this is our Type A electric school bus. This is the, uh, the design of it. Uh, radical new design. Uh, it's getting rave reviews. They call it the Iron Man bus. It looks a little bit like Iron Man. Uh, when we show it and talk about it anywhere, the, the, the school kids love it. Uh, BYD Type A electric school bus. So we go from 26 foot all the way down to 22.9 or 23 foot, 96 inch width and 122 inch weight uh, height. Uh, GVWR of 19.6 up to 36 plus uh, an operator for seating. 
uh, top speed of 65 miles. Uh, again, the range we can that can be flexible up to 140 miles, but that's depending on the battery capacity chosen. So again, we can we can work with the end user to put higher battery capacity or less battery capacity as needed. Other opportunities with BYD Type A solutions, and we're very excited about this. Um, the BYD Type A chassis can uh, can work in paratransit, mini transit, shuttle buses, DPW, general contracting trucks, utility trucks, delivery trucks, rental trucks, emergency vehicles and ambulances, just to name a few. So we're very excited about this new venture um, that we're getting into with the school bus market and this 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 bus of ours. BYD non-conventional type C and type D electric school buses. That's our design there. This bus is currently on the West Coast doing tours and demos. Uh, as I said, I'm eagerly awaiting the opportunity to get here on the East Coast and in the Northeast, and that'll probably be uh, quarter one, quarter two of next year. BOID non-conventional type C and type D electric school buses, they go from 35 foot up to 40 and a half foot. Uh, the width is 102 inches, the height is 133 roughly, uh, 274 inch wheelbase, curb weight of about 28,000 pounds, a GVWR of about 40,000. We can seat up to 84 uh, again, the range up to 155 miles that can be tailored to the property's needs. We can put less battery, um, so we're very flexible with that. And this is the BYD, and I apologize, some things shrunk up there, but this is the BYD holistic total solution approach, and we offer this throughout our vehicles, but uh, it seems to be a great opportunity with school bus. Um, so as you can see, solar energy storage, the charging stations, the school buses. Um, so great opportunity to, to charge at a low usage and to take care of the uh, peak demand. And I think I went through that pretty quick. So any questions? I, I thank you again for the opportunity to present. Randy, thank, thank you. you. Yes, you were on time. <laughs> I didn't have to I didn't have to interrupt you there. Um, right. A couple questions. Um, one, does BYD meet by America? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. And then another quick one, um, because of uh, the different um, battery technology, is there specific training or maintenance that um, staff, um, you know, whether a transit agency or school staff need to um, be aware of or that BYD offers on your battery technology? Certainly, certainly. Very safe battery, but we, we come in and offer all sorts of training from the operator to a battery safety to the maintenance of the vehicle. Uh, one of the things I like to say to everyone, uh, for all of us, all of our manufacturers, you know, it's it's a bus and it's a school bus at the end of the day. Um, so the the thing we try to do is support that through training and support and and touch on the batteries. Great, perfect, Randy. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thanks to Randy Primo from BYD. Jessica, you want to take it over? Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Peggy. And I'd like to introduce uh, up next, John Horanchik, who leads BAE Systems Transit Sales across North America. John has been with BAE Systems for 13 years, all of which has been in their power and propulsion solutions business. And I'll say for New Hampshire, BAE Systems has a presence here. And John was an instrumental partner in Nashua Transit Systems hybrid electric transit bus procurement. So this is this basically has been a model for heavy duty electrification projects in New Hampshire. So John, I will turn it over to you. You can take control and uh, go from there. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you everybody who's helped put together today's uh, presentation. It's been great. Um, I know it's virtual, but it's still nice to see uh, friendly faces and, and listen to everyone's products. It's, it's certainly an exciting time uh, in the market and uh, we're glad to be a part of it. Um, speaking of the bus Jessica was mentioning, uh, so what you're looking at is a Gillig BA Systems electric hybrid bus. You can tell it's a few years ago because nobody's wearing a mask. Um, this was rolled out in 2018. Uh, these buses are operating in and around Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, they're, they're proven, they're electric drive, they work in all sorts of weather conditions. 
and they're also compatible for uh, zero emission operation. So they they uh, can have uh, full electric accessories and have the ability to uh, shut the engine on and off as needed. So today I was going to just speak a little bit about BAE heritage, um, you know, where, where we've come from into the transit market and talk about the three different offerings we have for both electric hybrid, zero emission capable buses, uh, battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell. So where do we, how do we get in this market? Um, BA Systems is a global aerospace and defense company. If you go to our website, uh, you'd see submarines and battle, you know, all sorts of military hardware. Uh, but every second, somewhere in the world, an aircraft is either taking off or landing using our power electronics. Uh, so our heritage in aerospace uh, power management on aircraft uh, over 20 years ago, we started playing around with uh, transit buses, and uh, to this day, we have uh, 14,000 electric drive systems in service around the world. Our product line is focused on the products you see on the left. We deliver a full system solution. Um, so the, the power inverters that control both propulsion and accessory power on the bus, electric motors, energy storage systems, as, and as well as uh, we don't make the fuel cells, but we integrate them onto our platforms. You can see some of our customers on the far right, some of the largest transit agencies in, in North America and Europe, uh, as well as uh, some of the largest uh, fuel cell fleets uh, in North America. Uh, we provide solutions from what we refer to as near zero or low emission solutions to fully zero emission solutions for fuel cell and battery electric buses. And oh, hang on. User error. OK. Um, <laughs> So when we talk about hybrid electric buses, uh, most people don't realize that today's hybrid electric buses are also zero emission capable. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen here is downtown San Francisco, where uh, they have set up uh, 19 different um, zero emission, what they call green zones. They were established by the transit agency to run their hybrid buses in uh, disadvantaged areas throughout the city. Uh, these buses enter these zones, they shut off their engine, they run in completely zero emission modes uh, in these designated areas. Um, so as they move, as they idle, as they pick up passengers, uh, the engine is off, and then the hybrid engine will come back on outside the zones and recharge the battery. It's a great, flexible, uh, proven uh, way to bring zero emissions into your transit fleet. Uh, we're excited uh, next week at the New York Public Transit Association conference. Uh, Novabus will be uh, for the first time showing off their LFSE Plus long range battery electric bus. So this was Novabus's latest uh, offering in battery electric. Uh, we're proud to say we're, we're the propulsion uh, provider. So the traction motor, that, that traction motor is the same one that's on the Nashua hybrids. Uh, so it's a, uh, obviously a, a proven uh, component to the system along with our next generation power electronics, which are coming to market uh, for all three types of buses. And they're focused on uh, increased efficiency and space and weight savings. Sorry, my dog is hungry and it's right before lunch. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of people on the call uh, getting ready for lunch. Um, let me talk a little bit about hydrogen. And at the end of the presentation, I'll show um, some information showing uh, hydrogen bus performance in winter environments. Uh, so we, we have a 20 year history uh, playing with hydrogen fuel cell. There's about four dozen or so hydrogen fuel cell buses in operation today across the US. About half of those run on BA system powertrains. Um, it's been a program with the FTA. Uh, we've been partnered with the FTA, bringing hydrogen fuel cell buses into service. 
uh, we're actually starting to see more and more interest in hydrogen as um, some larger agencies look at, you know, uh, routes where battery electric technology hasn't been able to uh, scratch the itch per se. Um, and hydrogen fuel cell operations uh, offer some flexibility that battery electrics uh, don't. Uh, we're working with a company called Plug Power. Plug Power is a uh, provider of hydrogen fueling, hybrid, hydrogen infrastructure, and fuel cell engine products. Uh, we're integrating their fuel cell product line into our powertrain and offering it into the transit market. So between BA Systems and Plug Power, um, you can uh, get all your hydrogen fuel cell needs addressed, you know, from creating your own hydrogen on site to uh, installing hydrogen infrastructure, uh, as well as having hydrogen delivered. And then from uh, our perspective, bringing Plug Power's hydrogen fuel cells into transit, uh, integrated on our powertrain, and then providing service and support for those buses going forward. Uh, the last slide I'd like to share is a very interesting study that was put out by the Center for Transportation and the Environment, CTE. Uh, I put the link in here, so I, I think there these slides will be sent out so you can go look at this report. I just took a uh, cut from this study uh, that looked at um, fuel cell and battery electric bus performance at different temperature ranges. Um, and you can see on the on the chart here that I clipped out uh, what how range is affected um, across buses from British Columbia to Ohio to California, uh, and in comparison to uh, battery electric buses, uh, one of which was in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, the report is great. I'm not trying to promote CTE or advocate one way or the other. I just think it's a it's a really good uh, informational. Uh, report with a lot of data that um, helps, I think, fleets, you know, in Vermont, in New Hampshire, in Maine, uh, when they're looking at uh, how this technology could work for them in uh, colder weather environments. So I, I encourage you to go check that out. I'm sorry, Jessica, I think I went kind of quick, but um, I am uh, happy to, to, to listen or answer any questions that might be coming up in the chat or otherwise. Great, thanks so much, John. And don't apologize for going quick. Like Peggy said, we're, we're speed dating today. Um, there has been kind of some ongoing questions and maybe John, we have a minute to answer one of those. I'm curious to know, we've kind of mentioned the, obviously the um, issues with supply chain right now. Is there like a time frame or timeline you can give us for um, bringing an electrified Nova bus with BAE systems, you know, powertrain? Um, to from production to delivery, are there any impacts from the supply chain issue, or, or what is the the thoughts on that that you have? So we, we've already taken orders. I mean, so the bus will be shown for the first time in public next week, um, and then after that, by the way, it goes to APTA, which is the national conference, and then beyond that, it's going on a tour up into uh, up into Canada. Um, but as far as production, you know, knock on wood. Uh, we're not seeing, I mean, I, I can only speak for B BAE components, right? And there's a lot of other things that go on to a bus like seats and whatnot. But on the electric drive side of things, uh, fortunately for BAE, we, we make our own circuit boards. Um, so we, we control a lot of our own uh, sort of destiny when it comes to supply chain. We're not, you know, the buck kind of stops with BAE when it comes to the electric drive components. Uh, now, of course, we have sub suppliers, but um, you know, I can say as of right now, we're in pretty good shape. We're meeting our commitments to Nova Bus uh, heading into next year. Um, you know, as far as the other components on the bus, you know, maybe Randy or uh, or, or Patera could could talk about that. But um, it, it's it's certainly a real thing. I, you know, we it's it's affecting all parts of the economy. Thank you for the, those comments, John. And thank you again for your presentation. Sure. All right. Thank so we have.
<laughs> Great. We have another poll that we'd like to launch here. And in this poll, we're asking what additional information would you, uh, the attendees on the call, be interested in? Uh, we've got a couple options here. Support with grants and funding opportunities, charging infrastructure costs, more information on that, case studies that may be applicable to school bus or transit electrification, overnight charging information or storage information for electric buses. We'll give a couple minutes to go ahead and, and respond to that. Looks like a few responses coming in already here. It's like primary interest and support with grants and funding opportunities and with charging infrastructure costs. We're hoping to uh, to launch another webinar that tackles uh, information on on charging options for for medium and heavy duty vehicles as well. Looks like that's still in the lead. Charging infrastructure costs kind of taking the lead there. All right, we'll go ahead and close that poll. And as I mentioned, we're planning an upcoming webinar. Uh, we're looking to connect you guys with uh, responses to charging needs and some, maybe some information on what the utilities are doing as well. Um, we're also planning really exciting some um, long term demonstrations. We have uh, partnered with XL Fleet to uh, provide a, a plug in hybrid electric GMC Sierra 3500 that's equipped with a plow prep package and we're looking to launch some long term demos in the upper valley in early December. So um, any interested attendees on this call, please feel free to reach out to Peggy or myself on that more info to come there. We also have uh, wanted to highlight a few funding opportunities that may be applicable to anyone interested in actually procuring any of the vehicles you've seen highlighted today or or any of the others that you can find through the alternative fuel data center uh, e vehicle locator tool. So one of which is EPA has recently launched um, the American Rescue Plan or, or ARP for electric school bus rebates. Um, you know, pay attention to the details here. You need to apply in advance of order or purchase. There's some information on what the existing buses and, and replacement buses should be, um, as well as eligible applicants. Um, in, particularly, in particular, applicants should be public school districts listed on the ARP electric school bus rebates eligibility, eligibility list, as well as some other um, eligible applicant information there. Now, rebate reimbursement for this is about 300,000 per bus, and this is now open with applications due on November 5th. Additionally, for school buses, EPA offers the Diesel Emission Reduction Act school bus rebates. Once again, apply in advance of order of purchase and some information there on what the existing bus model year should be and, and uh, more details on, on the replacement buses as well as eligible applicants. So the rebate reimbursement for this is about 65,000 for battery or, or hydrogen electric buses, and that does change per alternative fuel. So um, you know you want to pay attention to the rebate reimbursement for that with a max rebate of 300,000 and once again applications due November 5th. FTA also offers grants for buses and bus facilities as well as a sub program that they offer for low or no emissions. Um, information on this slide highlights that uh, this can be used to uh, purchase electric buses, so uh, pay attention to the details on that. There's some links on the slide and this is now open with application applications due on November 5th. And then of course EPA offers the diesel emissions reduction state grant and also national grant program. Um, typically this opens in the fall for the state grant funding and with the expectation that projects are completed within approximately a year. Um, in New Hampshire we are supplementing this with our VW funds. Vermont also has a program and Maine as well. Um, I want to highlight on this slide that up to 45% of funding is available for replacing diesel with electric and that can apply to school buses and transit buses. And the great thing about this program too is that funding can be applied towards charging stations. Um, the other highlight here is that there are no minimum engine model year requirements for replacing diesel with electric. So a great opportunity for any interested applicants there. And now I'll turn it over to Sarah. Thank you, Jessica. 
So just to highlight again some of the, the references and, and resources that um, your clean cities can bring, uh, coalitions can bring to you um, in the National Clean Cities Network. They have uh, a listing of all the uh, update a listing of all the laws and incentives in each state, which are changing all the time. So we we try and keep, um, we inform, you know, the national network of, of the various laws and incentives that are available. So it's a great central resource to go to. There's also case studies on um, vehicle types, technologies, and you can learn a lot more and those are also continually updated so that really has kind of like the most relevant and new information as well as a vehicle search tool and um, a fleet which is a tool that can help calculate cost of ownership and, and look at your total fleet options we'll go to the next slide so um we also provide really direct technical assistant to assistance to any fleets that need it. We have a technical response service that is kind of like an, an on-hand uh, researcher to look for case studies or, or relevant um, technologies or advice on particular um, inclusion of technologies or looking at you know any issues that are that are coming up with vehicles across the country. So please reach out to us there. And then we also have a Tiger team level, which is really a, a very targeted um, technical problem solving team that we can draw on for any um, barriers or challenges that anybody's have um, when they're implementing uh, new technologies. So please reach out to us. We're happy to provide additional information and technical assistance. And next slide, which I think we should be wrapping up. Yeah, thank you to everybody. We had a great selection of panelists today, and we're really happy to hear about all the technologies um, that are really on the road right now um, and really working to reduce emissions in our community. So that's very exciting. And we will um, be in touch about our next uh, webinar, which we need to set a date, but will be sometime in the next few months. So thank you all, and thank you to our, all our presenters today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks a lot. everybody. Enjoy Thank lunch. You. Enjoy lunch, yes. <laughs>